On May the 4th, Neil Druckmann released a special message about The Last of Us Part 2. I was about to call it Fallout 76 for some odd reason. May the 4th. That, remember when May the 4th used to be cool? Now you're watching a woman dress as a stormtrooper trying to promote some business, get completely and utterly trounced by the Canadian police because they're scared to death of someone in a stormtrooper outfit. But that should be another video. Neil Druckmann came out to let us all know a very special message. Are you ready for it? I know I am, Neil. You know what's the real crime in this <laughs> video? It's at 480p. It's 2020, and Neil puts out a phone video at 480p. Talk about the lack of things <laughs> to give. Hey, guys. Hey, As, Neil. Uh, I'm sure you've heard by now The Last of Us Part 2 has a release date of... June 19th, 2020, but uh, that's not what this video is about. We wanted to let you know that we have gone gold. Ah! That's ah! right. The Last of Us 2 has gone gold, like I give a rat's ass. In all honesty, who cares? After all the fallout of this game, what makes you think that we'd really want to support it? And judging from the dislike ratio, it's not going to be a good look for you guys when it drops. I'm sure the loyalists like Jade Tech TV will buy it day one and sit there and go, it's amazing. Then get on his fucking YouTube channel and go, tsk, 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 tsk. Now, the PC fanboys, they went out of their way to try to destroy this game because they're afraid of Sony's exclusives. That's right. The people who have Munchausen's disease and can't see past their, oh, God, it's so hard not to curse their nose on this site or in the gaming industry because their whole identity is tied to a plastic box that has components that are identical to the opposition's plastic box. Oh no, PlayStation 5, Xbox Scarlet, whatever the hell it's called. It's the same trash. One might be slightly faster in the graphics department, and the other one might have a faster SSD. Let me jerk off six ways from Sunday. My master of the plastic box has tickled my buttocks with a slight alteration. Woohoo! Now I'm gonna go troll the other guys because their system doesn't do what mine's has. I implore you, if you are mentally disabled in that region and can't see the fact that The Last of Us 2 has gone out of its way to basically trash the fan base. About finding it an unnecessary addition here and you're a homophobe. Speak up that you'd rather had Joel remain as the playable character and the game wasn't made for you in the first place. I came across a tweet from Boone Cotter, one of Noyadoc's own employees, and I found it so typical for this whole situation. He tweeted the following. If you're so socially and culturally inept that the option to play a video game as a female gets you all worked up in a frothy nerd rage, my name is Boone. I make games, but not for people like you. Your kind is done, mate. Do everyone a favor and fuck off. You're embarrassing. The most cringeworthy aspect of all this shit is the ridiculous narrative that game developers are held ransom by the oppressive chokehold of the SJW agenda. Truth, we actually want to make good games, inclusive games, games that disregard your toxic gamer bro bullshit. It's exactly this antagonizing, hostile tone that marks the issue I pointed out in the intro of this video. Either you're with them or you're against them, there is no middle way to these people. I mean, it's even gone out of its way to silence people from speaking. Why is it, like, look at the gaming journalists, dude. Notice how they're, like, just going, oh, uh, uh, hackers did this. Notice how there's very few gaming websites willing to talk about the fact that Sony and Naughty Dog went out of their way to silence people like the Chinese government. And none of these damn outlets had the balls to say something about it because they're too afraid to lose their exclusivity garbage. God forbid Kotaku doesn't get The Last of Us 2 to do a stupid review early. Guess what, Kotaku? No one goes to your site anyway because you suck. If you didn't suck, I wouldn't exist. I am the creation of your laziness. I am the amalgamation of your foolishness. These stupid articles about how great thoughts are and how if you point out they abuse a the system, you're a sexist, a racist, and a transphobe, and a massage, every buzzword they can think of to discredit you when you're simply using common sense. Back to Neil. Anyway, this stupid video plays out like a megalomaniac. They should have Kim Jong undo it, because it's the same thing. He sits there and congratulates his dev team. That if you read about, there's a lot of crunch going on, 
at Naughty Dog, and a lot of people aren't happy. But don't worry, the people at the top will tell you what a bigot you are if you didn't like what they were doing with the game. And I just want to take this moment to congratulate the team that has pulled off the most ambitious game we've ever made. And I know I've said this before, but you won't know to what degree until you get your hands on it and just see the care, the care that has gone into every detail from the level design to the... Hey, did I mention agenda pushing? They've been doing it for a long time now. Everyone in Naughty Dog that you may have liked or believed in, the guys who helped create Uncharted, they're gone. This is Naughty Dog only in name. It's pretty much a new developer. A developer that thinks Anita Sarkeesian is the bee's knees. <clears throat> More specifically, I'm talking about our female characters. And whether we want to admit it or not, these are role models. And yet we sexualize, we objectify, we marginalize, and we reduce these female characters a lot less than they can be. And this is coming from a guy that almost made a really misogynistic game. So I kind of know what I'm talking about. So once this thing failed and I had this awakening, almost exactly at the same time, um, this Kickstarter happened about the tropes versus women in video games. And while you might argue with the way it delivers its message or whether every point is, is exact, you can't argue with just the pattern that you see in the industry. But this was merely these thought. Look, it's no secret that Noyadog has been inspired by the extreme social justice movement that we see today. Neil Druckmann is a very big fan of Anita Sarkeesian. He's praised her work and even handed her an award for it. But I'm pretty sure that alarm bells will go off for many of you just hearing her name. She's far from someone I would look up to, that's for sure. She's a person who loves nothing more than to accuse gamers and game creators of sexism, racism, homophobia, and all the other judgmental terms that you can find. She was never a gamer, and a minute of research will make clear that she represents the complete opposite of tolerance and freedom for gamers and creators to decide what to make and what to play. This is simply worrying to me, and the more I hear about The Last of Us 2, the more I fear that Noidog is about to go overboard with this stuff. Which is absolutely just disgusting. It's abhorrent. I don't know why I need as a hero. One of her co-workers on Feminist Frequency was begging for work on Twitter. And everybody just glosses over it like it didn't happen. Meanwhile, Anita's in Morocco chilling like a villain buying French art. And we're sitting here like, oh, she's some sort of freedom fighter. I wish my oppression could get my ass to France, have me buying expensive stuff. I wish my oppression would allow me to do public speaking for 20K a pop. Wow, must be so hard. A few weeks away from, from getting it. And a lot of you have sent us very sweet, encouraging messages along, the, along that time that have been really helpful as we make this thing. Where am I at with this? Anyway, this video is trash. It's absolute trash. Neil could have came out here and he could have at least lied. It would have been my move. Hey guys, uh, uh, I want to address the fact that a lot of YouTubers are unfairly being flagged and the copyright systems being abused. Nope, Neil don't care. If anything, he probably signed off on it. He's like, good, go get them. Get Yellow Flash. He's terrible. He hates women. Some guy said something about us. Get his video flagged down. He's a misogynist and a racist. He's black. I need proof. They actually sat here and did terrible things to the YouTube ecosystem and don't care. And me saying it, it's to be expected. I am a culture critic. Just like Anita Sarkeesian. But since I'm not a woman... I'm going to be broke the rest of my life. But all jokes aside, me saying that this is trash is to be expected. But when Naughty Dog's own fan base start to turn on them, when the fan base actually points out that this has been going on for a while now, that says something. When someone like Robin Gaming, whose entire channel was started because of his love for Naughty Dog, predicted back on July 1st of 2018 that these things would come to pass, he, were, he put out a video that was like a warning, and we missed it. Reminds me of Filthy Frank's last video. If you watch it, and you look at it through the eyes of film, you'll realize Filthy Frank was warning us about YouTube before he left. I didn't see the message, Frank. Joji, save me. I make music too, dude. Get me the hell out of here. <laughs> 
and no matter what these entities tell you, they are not God. They never will be. We're the only ones who are powerful enough to make it. Ah, take it. Take it. <laughs>